Okay, the only thing better than love in the air is the smell of great food in the air. If you want to celebrate February 14th with a meal to remember, Jackie Denker has a Valentine's Day brunch to sweeten your love life. Valentine's Day is coming up. And what says I love you more than food? Yeah, I think that weighs more than gifts monetarily. Yes. So to show us how to make a show-stopping brunch for our loves this year, we turned to Dana Dumas, CEO and head chef at Sugar Jam, the Southern Kitchen in Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, let's get to it. Okay. Starting with a strawberry stuffed French toast. It's really fun to make with your partner. What I'm gonna need you to do okay. is crack eight eggs. Followed by milk, white and brown sugar, some nutmeg and Saigon cinnamon. This cinnamon is a little bit more potent. In goes pink Himalayan sea salt. Whisk and add melted unsalted butter. This looks so good already. Yeah. Pour in vanilla bean paste and squeeze in half an orange. It actually rounds out the flavor of the French toast batter. And whisk away. So look at that, look at your whisk. I'm She's trying. flicking the wrist. I'm trying, right? Dana. Dunk your bread in the batter. Dana uses challah bread to avoid any mushiness in the middle. Toss on griddle until golden browned. And now for the cream cheese filling. Ooh. Which is cream cheese, it's strawberries, it's vanilla, a little bit of that pink Him Himalayan uh, sea salt, and some powdered sugar. So this okay. is really simple. All you do is mix it together. Anyone would be so excited to get this. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Now it's time to put it all together. Scoop on the filling, garnish, and pour on your syrup. We went with a homemade strawberry. From our hearts to their plates. Yay! Isn't there something? That is next level. Now we're whipping up homemade strawberry shortcake using biscuits. Because we just can't get enough of strawberries. In a mixing bowl, toss in flour, baking powder, Himalayan sea salt. Just a little pinch. Some chilled unsalted butter, buttermilk, and beat together. It will look like this. Roll the dough out and get to cutting. Pro tip, do not cut and twist. You let the air out of your biscuits. Your biscuits will be deflated. Don't twist. You just press down and quickly pick it up. Hey! Brush with an egg wash and in the oven they go at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. Voila! Voila! Scoop whipped cream onto the biscuits, pour on some strawberry syrup, garnish with berries, and you're done. Mmm. Oh, oh, mm, oh, mm. oh. You know it's good when something makes you want to dance. Yeah, I know it. Finally, to wash it all down, a blushing strawberry. Start with peach nectar, pineapple juice. I think she's done this before. <laughs> some strawberry puree and whiskey. We went with Uncle Nearest whiskey. Do you like your drinks stronger? So I guess it depends on how the date's going, you know? Mm. <laughs> Shake with ice. <laughs> Put in some basil and remember to smack it to release the oils and aroma. Hey. Hey. Strain and enjoy. Woo! We're strong. That's good. For full recipes, head to our Facebook page, The List Show TV. Feeding our bellies and hearts this year with a delicious Valentine's Day brunch. February is the month of love, and if you're looking for something exciting to do, don't worry, because Teresa Strasser found some of the best Valentine's Day celebrations happening across America. Hey, Teresa. Thank you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. and We've got ways to celebrate whether you're with someone or you're single. Coming in at number one, Loveland Sweetheart Festival in Colorado. This family-friendly event takes place in downtown Loveland from February 10th to the 11th. Downtown Loveland is the heart of our city with shops, art galleries, a plethora of restaurants. It will offer live music, food trucks, contests, the Sweetheart Classic Four Mile Race, and much more. For more info, check out visitlovelandco.org. At number two, love in Times Square, New York. It's the perfect place for a date night to say I love you, I do, or will you marry me? Couples can make the day really special by popping the question under the iconic American Eagle screen. Oh God, it was just totally unexpected. It's like something out of a film. Or you can get married in the heart of Times Square. In the power of the state of New York invested in me, I now pronounce you married. But if you've already tied the knot, don't worry, because you can renew your vows. It is my privilege to pronounce you once again lovers for life. Registration is now open to participate. 
For more info, visit timesquarenyc.org. And last on our Valentine's Day celebrations is something for the singles, the Cry Me a Cockroach fundraiser in Texas. Well, San Antonio Zoo secured a future for wildlife by naming a roach after your ex. For the fourth year, the fundraiser is being hosted by the San Antonio Zoo. The goal is to raise funds while sending a unique message to your not-so-special someone on Valentine's Day. Pick between a roach, veggie, or rat, name it after your ex, you can send it anonymously, you can even email it to your ex. Just visit sazoo.org and select your donation. Celebrating Valentine's Day with a lot of love and a little laughter too. Lots more to come on the list. Stay right here. Celebrating Valentine's Day with a lot of love and a little laughter too. Coming up, a movie critic from Rotten Tomatoes is sharing with us three of the most highly anticipated movies coming out this year, one of which hits theaters this month. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Valentine's Day is coming and this could be the year that you take a romantic dinner to a whole new level. How? Well, a chef is showing Teresa Strasser how to make more out of your moments together by sharing food. When it comes to dating, some of us get caught up thinking, where are we gonna go and what are we gonna do? But maybe we should be thinking about how are we going to do it? So we met up with Chef Hector Godinez of Grimaldi's Pizzeria in Scottsdale, Arizona to learn how to spice up a dinner date. It's not necessarily about what you eat, but about how you eat. How you eat, who you spend it with. He says, scratch the old routine of opening a menu and ordering separate entrees and instead, make it a shareable occasion. The intimacy of just having different things to share versus just the one definitely makes it more intimate for sure. His first sharing tip, look for plates where you can create your own sampler. Look for options kind of like this, an appetizer sampler or something yes. that you can pick off of. For instance, bruschetta. Am I saying right, bruschetta? Bruschetta, that's right. Grimaldi's has the option to build your own. It's not just sticking to one. It's, hey, we've got different options. I like classic dishes where you might like the roasted red pepper and neither one has ever had the artichoke. You can both pick one or two options each from their list. We're sticking to the safe zone and then getting out of our bubble a little bit. Second tip, chef says, get playful with ordering. If you want to start off with dessert as your appetizer. That's right? fun. Why not rearrange the order of courses, he says, and go for it with dessert first. One dessert is very intimate, but once you get to multiple, you each start finding common ground on different things. Some chocolate, some cheese, throw in a cannoli. He says a trio of desserts like that is sure to serve up more conversation too. It's good to have the one common thing, but when you have multiple and it starts to open the doors to more conversation and even getting to know each other more. Well, I don't need an entree. <laughs> I've already had Oreo cake. I'm good. Last sharing tip. If there aren't options for creating a dish together, share one but go bigger, he says, like with an antipasto. You're building the perfect bite here. Combine the flavors instead of just individually tasting each one. It's a way to customize your bites and bond while you're at it. I'm gonna do some dried fruit and we can play off each other's tastes here. And see this is like. chemistry, exactly. just like love. Whatever you're celebrating, he says food brings people together. If it's a first day, hey, let's try to figure out what each other's taste buds are like. Down the road, you kind of already know and kind of go off of that. Well, you're gonna share everything in 20 years, your hopes, your dreams. Why not your appetizer? Exactly. Why not make sharing a hit this Valentine's Day and every day?